In this video, you'll learn how to create custom functions in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, a function simply produces an output typically based on inputs or arguments. Now, it doesn't have to have inputs or arguments in order for a function to output something, but typically you have something you're putting into a function and it's gonna do something with those inputs and give you an output. And so that's what a function is. And R has a bunch of built-in functions already. And also if you're importing packages and using packages, there's functions in those packages that you're likely using. So you've seen them, but more than likely you might wanna create your own every so often if you have unique situations. Uh, but just, just for the sake of example, here's a couple that you've probably seen, like the print. That is a function right here that is native to R. So this is a function. We can run that real quick. You've likely seen something like sequence. So this is how we can go ahead and create a vector. And we'll just do one to 20, step two, and run that real quick. So that right there is a sequence function and so on. So yeah, you've probably seen functions and used them before, but this is how you go ahead and create your own custom function inside of R. So I'm gonna do something real simple real quick. So first things first is we gave our function a name. So I'm just gonna call it Nathan real quick. And then we go ahead and do this to go ahead and store that. And then we type out function. And then we can throw in parentheses here. Now between these two parentheses, we can go ahead and add in our arguments, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I wanna show you that you can go ahead and have a function that does not have any inputs or arguments. So we'll leave it blank just like that. Do the squirrely brackets, make a space, and here we go. So now between these squirrely brackets, you're gonna go ahead and do all your equations and fancy stuff that you want your function to go ahead and do. For this particular one, all I want it to do is return, return. So this is what's gonna be, um, outputted from the function. Return means output from function. So I wanna return and I'm gonna say Nathan is cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run that entire function right there. And now if I go ahead and call the function. So to call a function, you just type in the name of the function with the parentheses and there's no arguments going in here, but if you had arguments, you could go ahead and throw them in the parentheses. But I'm just gonna run it like that. And you see just like that, I get the output Nathan is cool, so awesome. Uh, and as you see, there are no inputs or arguments. So let's go ahead and give it an argument. So I'm gonna give it one argument of X. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do a return and it's gonna be replicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the replicate function. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to return X. So now I'm going to have to give it a value here and it's gonna go ahead and replicate Nathan as cool X number of times that I put into my function. So if I do, gotta run it real quick to store my function. And then if I throw Nathan 10 in there, I get Nathan is cool 10 times. So pretty nifty stuff, right? Um, and hopefully this is all making some sense. Alrighty, so I just realized that I should have covered something that I didn't and that's setting default values for your arguments. So right here, we don't have any default value, but we could set like a default value to one. And so then if I leave my function blank, let me run this to store it real quick. And then if I run it, you'll see that my function runs uh, just the one time. If I set the default to 10, let's say, and I go ahead and store my function, and then I just run my function empty, you see that it repeats 10 times just like that. Uh, if I wanted to do it five times, if I throw a, an argument in there and I run it, you'll see that it runs it, you know, the five times. So if you put a, an argument in here, it'll do that argument. But if you leave that blank and you set a default value, it'll run that default value. So I didn't cover it at first, but it's important. If you want to do a default value, just set it right here and boom, just like that, you got your, your default value. Back to the video. So that's a pretty simple function and I just wanted to kind of show you the formatting of a function. You have the name and then you have this and then you type out function, parentheses, scrolly brackets and then what you want to go ahead and do. Now let's go ahead and do one that's a little bit more valuable. So let's go ahead and create a function that helps us calculate the area of a cylinder. So I'm just going to copy this real quick and paste it over here so we can look at it together. Uh, so we'll just say cylinder and then start and function. And we got two variables here, two arguments. We got radius and height that we need to go ahead and uh, utilize. So we'll do R H, keep it simple, and then squirrely brackets. And now what I wanna go ahead and do is create a new variable called area. 
and this variable is going to be exclusive to this particular function, and meaning that I can only call area from within the function itself. Like area is not going to be outside of this particular function. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second here if that's going over your head a little bit. But we got area in here, and I want to go ahead and do 2 times pi. And pi is a value that's automatically stored or already stored in R. So if you just type out pi like that, it knows it's 3.14, whatever it is. And then we're going to do it times R times H plus 2 times pi times times r and then to the second power just like that so that is our area equation and now what i want to go ahead and do is return an area and we'll delete that out of there now and now i'll go ahead and run this real quick and so i have my cylinder function and so now if i come down here and do cylinder and do 2 and 2 and run it real quick. We see that my cylinder area is 50.26548. Now, just to double check stuff, let's come over here and we'll do 2 and 2. And we see 50.27, which is the same value over here. So it looks like our function is working correctly. Let's just do, I don't know, 20 over here and run it real quick. We get 276. And let's just double check. So 2 and 20, and we get 276.46. So, okay, looks like our function, we did it and set it up correctly. So nifty stuff over here. Now, as you may know, there's a fundamental rule in R, and that is that all these values in here are vectors. Even if they're standalone values, they're actually a vector. So in cases where you see standalone values, you can throw in vectors and stuff will happen with those vectors. So what I mean by that is let's just do like one through 10 here and go ahead and run this function real quick. And boom, just like that, we've gone through and basically iterated through our cylinder function 10 times with 10 different radiuses through our function. And then all of them have the same height of 20. And so we have these areas produced as it iterates through one through 10 we get different areas. So that's pretty nifty, right? It automatically goes through that entire vector and calculates the values that we've entered into our, our function here as our arguments. So that is pretty nifty stuff. Now, one thing that could be a little confusing though is like the output. So it's not very readable. You're like, you gotta be like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to click to figure out whichever value it is. So one thing we also might want to go ahead and do is throw in like the radius that we're iterating through and maybe the height too. So let's try it with combine. So we'll use the C and we'll throw an R, H, an area, and then close it out here. And then we got to rerun our entire block of code here to reset our function. And let's go ahead and run it and see what comes out the other end. Okay, so we got something going on here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we get twenty. And then so so something's happening. We see our our vectors. We see one through ten, and then we see our twenty value here, and then we see all of the areas. So combine combine might not be the best option, but you know we we got to start somewhere. So instead of combine, we might use C bind instead. So column bind. And if you don't know what that is, I have another video where we go ahead and talk about C bind and R bind as well, row bind. So I'll link to those in the description down below if you need help with matrices and so on. But we'll go with C bind and this will help us generate a matrix. So let's go ahead and run this function real quick and then go ahead and run it down here. And now, now we're starting to cook with some gravy if that's a saying. So now we got columns that present our radius, our height, and then our calculated area. So we can get a good snapshot of what's going on. So if we got a radius of five and a height of 20, we get this value right here. So pretty nifty stuff, how it's iterating through our entire system. So cool, right? I hope you I hope you think that's cool. I think it's pretty cool. Um, let's say we, we throw in a, a vector back here as well. So 20 through 30. And we run this now. And I'm receiving an error message because I have one extra number or value in this vector here. So what I should do is 29. So if we run this real quick, now we see it going through the entire vector. So now we got a radius of one, height of 20 equals this area. You know, radius of five, height of 24 equals this area. And then radius of 10, height of 29 equals 
this area right here, and so on. So hopefully you're able to see how R utilizes your function, and if you give it vectors to go through, like it'll go through all those vectors. Uh, you don't have to create a loop or anything fancy like that. You just give it the vector and it'll automatically iterate through it. And you'll probably wanna change how your output is. You might wanna use CBind, or you could also use data, data frame. And let's go ahead and run this real quick. And you get pretty much the same, the same output, but it's a data frame instead of a matrix. So we got other videos coming up on data frames and I already have videos on matrices. So if you know which one you wanna use, you know, they have pros and cons to each. Data frames are a little bit more better or manipulative or uh, there's more options functionality with data frames. So that's probably where you'll lean to, but a matrix or data frame and you see, you know, it outputs the values just like the the matrix up here versus the data frame down here and so on. So if you're putting or outputting multiple values, you probably want to use a matrix or data frame and so on. But th that's functions in a nutshell and how to create your own from scratch. And you know, they can be pretty complicated. You can have multiple lines of code up in this area, anything you want between these two squirrely brackets in order to go ahead and calculate your output. So you'll have your output here and that, that's how a function works. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.